what's up everybody welcome back to my channel my name is Tamisha also known as Mrs. Coda so today I'm going to be talking about primitive reflexes and some quick tips on how you can remember them for your MBCOT exam all right let's get into it okay so first reflex we're going to talk about is the Moro reflex okay um, the best way to remember this reflex is think of startle, right? Um, when a infant is startled, which is moral reflex, all hands, feet come out. So think of it as if the baby is about to fall and they completely go into um, extension, okay? That is the moral reflex. So when you think of moral, think of startle um, and when you're looking at primitive reflexes, these are typically what you're going to see from time of birth, so zero to about three months, okay? So this is what we're gonna go over. Just primarily from zero to three months, primitive, most often seen um, reflexes that usually acts on MBCOT. Okay, the next one is traction reflexes. So think of this. The baby is lying on their back, right so the baby is in supine and the mother or the father grabs the baby's arms and pulls the baby into what we like to call a long sit or simply just into a sitting position when they do so what tends to happen with newborns is because they don't have control of their head yet their head tends to lag back so that is called a traction reflex okay so if you are having difficulty remembering what traction reflex is, just think of it as a lag of the neck as a response because there's no control yet of that neck. This is why it's important that um, as newborns, their head is supported. So with the head lag, the atypical movement, or I should say the abnormality, is if the baby stays in head lag. The starting point um, could be in a little bit of a lag, but eventually the baby's head should come into alignment with, with the pull, or they should also activate the trunk. As they get a little bit further in age, about two, three, even four months, now when the adult or mommy or daddy is pulling on their um, wrist and hand from a supine position, they should actually be able to come up in complete alignment with their body so again when you're looking at primitive reflexes you're looking at the typical development against the atypical so what that simply means is what is expected at the normal development and what is abnormal at that development so again when you're doing a track when you're looking at traction reflexes if the head stays in a lag position all the way up that's atypical okay if the head starts off with a slight um you know slightly bent back but then eventually comes forward that is a that is a um typical development towards a um, milestone um you really want to see that the head eventually by three four months there's no more lag and the head is coming up with the body body completely in um, neutral okay okay so the next one is the routine reflexes so the routine reflexes um, is really when you are touching the side of the baby's mouth and by touching the side of baby of mouth with a slight touch of your finger the baby should move towards the direction of the touch okay um, so if it was touching on this side the baby's head should move that side that is typical development if the um, parent is doing this and the baby is not doing anything that is atypical because usually with the root and reflexes it is more of like a suck response so when that happens, it's a response that's, oh, I need to move towards where I'm going to um, feed, okay? So again, routing, the, you're looking for the baby to, one, turn their head towards the direction of the touch, as well as open their mouth. This is in a response for the baby to search for the breast or the bottle. So another reflex you're going to see from zero to three months, usually it'll disappear after, I would give us a, give us a take three to four months. I mean, I mean, every baby different, but usually there's certain things that happen within development. So the next one is called Palmer grasp. So that's simply when um, the parent 
puts their finger into the baby's hand and the baby grasps around that hand. It's a reflex of holding. For example, um, babies tend to do this if there's like a small toy placed in their hand, they'll grasp. It's a grasp reflex, okay? So this is called the palmal grasp. Um, likewise, the plantar grasp is if you have the baby's foot and you kind of touch in the middle of the foot, you'll see the toes and feet kind of flex, okay? So same situation. Um, when it comes to palmar grass, again, hand flexion and plantar grass, when you touch the, the, the bottom of the feet and the toes kind of flex and the foot moves into a flexure position. The asymmetric tonic neck reflex is simply when the head is passively turned. So let's say, for example, if my head is turned here to the left, What's going to happen is the left arm, the arm on the same side, is going to go into extension, whereas in the lower extremity, the right leg goes into flexion. Okay, so again, if my head is turned this way to the opposite side, the, the head, the direction of the head, okay, is going to elicit the extension of the arm. Okay, and that can be both arms. Um, generally, it's usually like one, but both arms can be extended and the opposite leg will go into flexion. The reason for this is a um, reflex of preventing a rolling. Okay, so the head might turn um, and then the body is going to respond this way and it's this is something you would want to see because at the end of the day you don't want your baby's head turning and then the whole body rolls or rotates towards that side asymmetric tonic neck reflex okay so the next one we're going to do is symmetric tonic neck reflex so the symmetric tonic neck reflex is let's say you have the baby on prone which the baby is on their belly um, obviously, you're going to have one hand under the baby's belly and the other hand by the baby's like chin. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be putting the baby's neck into extension. Okay, so once the baby's neck goes into extension, what, what you should see is that both upper extremities go into um, an extension, whereas both lower extremity comes into more of a flexion. All right, and this is like starting off to prepare the baby to um, support their their neck raising their neck will extend over through that three month mark for the most part um and this is really good and this is where people talk about tummy time um and you'll know and you'll normally see this with babies that when when parents are performing tummy time the baby will start learning how to raise their head up and their their arms go into extension and their their um lower extremity comes into flexion so i hope that these were helpful um, I know I went through quite a few, but not enough for you guys. So my, the best tip I can give you is when you are going through your primitive reflexes, you want to think of things that you would typically see, um, with newborns to let's say three, four, three to four months. Okay. Sometimes six months. These are called primitive reflexes. And the importance of primitive reflexes is that they should disappear after a certain period of time. If a child continues with primitive reflexes after, let's say, six, seven months, then that is a concern, okay? So be sure to like, share, and subscribe, um, and leave your comments below. All right, take care, guys. Bye-bye.